In this video, we're going to do an example where we compute the surface area for some function that's described explicitly. And the first thing I want to note is that what I have is an implicit description of my surface. This function can be thought of as a function of x, y, and z, and it's the function z plus x squared plus y squared, and it's equal to some constant, in this case, 1. And what we'd seen in our previous video is that we had a formula that applied in this case. And the formula worked as follows. It said that the surface area was equal to the double integral over whatever the relevant region was of the gradient of f, its magnitude, and then divided out by the length of the gradient of f dotted with k hat, and then all integrated over whatever the area was. So this is the formula we're going to use, but I, I want to try and sketch it first just to have a quick visualization of what's going on. So if I put up my axes here, now I can manipulate this by taking the x squared plus y squared to the other side and write this as 1 minus x squared minus y squared. And this makes it a little bit clearer. It's a parabola where I start up at some point 1, and then I drop down as a sort of a parabola going, if that's the uh, negative axis, down like this. And it, and it forms a sort of nice sort of circular shape, and I get a nice little uh, parabola, something like that. Now, the key thing I want to know is that this is some surface that lives above the xy axis. So in other words, if I'm at some point here on the surface, I have some vector that sticks out, and that is the gradient of f vector. Indeed, the gradient of f is normal to the surface. And then if I project down to the corresponding point on the xy plane, there is a vector that sticks straight up, which is the k hat vector. And you'll notice that in our computation, we talk about the gradient of f dotted with the k hat. And the reason it was k hat here and not i hat or j hat or something else is specifically because this can be thought of as a surface over top of the plane and has the property that the gradient of f dotted with the k hat is actually never zero. For example, if your surface was straight vertical, then the gradient of f, which would come directly out, it would have a zero dot product with k hat. But in this case, that's not what's happening. So we, we can use gradient of f dotted with k hat and the fact that this is never zero is going to mean that we've got a proper integrand that we can work with. Okay, so we had to compute gradient of f, gradient of f dot k, and do these computations. I, I better write down f one more time here, otherwise I'm going to forget it. It was z plus x squared plus y squared. We were setting that equal to 1. Thus, gradient of f is, okay, partial derivative with respect to x is going to give me 2x, partial derivative with respect to y, 2y, and partial derivative with respect to z is going to give me just 1. There's only 1 z there. Thus, the magnitude of the gradient of f is square root of the sum of the components squared, so square root of 4x squared plus 4y squared, and then finally plus 1. Gradient of f dotted with k hat now, so k hat is just 1 in the k hat component, and so there's no s component and no y component, and I'm dotting it with the 1, which is the k hat component of the gradient of f, and so this is just going to be equal to uh, 1. The absolute value of 1, of course, is just 1, so I could add absolute values on there and not change anything. So I'm at surface area is the double integral over the region. I, I still haven't figured that out, but the integrand, at least, I can do 4x squared, 4y squared, plus 1. I could divide out by 1, but I just won't, and then dx dy. So the issue then is the region. The integrand's fine. And the region, well, because I have this parabola coming down and it's above the xy plane, the region that this surface is thought of as above of is a circle in the xy plane. So some region above a circle. So one of the things I want to try to do is capture the relevant symmetries. And if I'm doing this over a circular region, converting this to polar coordinates is going to be a lot easier to do. So I'm going to convert this to polar. So this is going to be the double integral, and I will now know what it's the double integral of. Okay, x squared plus y squared is r squared. So this becomes, in the integrand, the integral of 4r squared plus 1. And now I have a Cartesian integral, dx dy. I'm converting it to a polar integral. As we've seen before, that conversion is r dr d theta. And indeed, here I do need that r in the r dr d theta, because I'm starting with the Cartesian interval and converting it. It's 
not like in some of our previous examples where we were talking about a parameterization in terms of r and theta and thus the first double integral we wrote down was an integral dr d theta and there wasn't that r out the front because i am converting to polar i do need to have that r dr d theta there what are the limits? Well, r is between 0 and 1, I believe. Let's just scroll up to make sure. Yes, this was 1 minus x squared. So when z is 0, it's x squared plus y squared equal to 1. The boundary of that circle in the xy plane is 1. And then theta is a full revolution, 0 to 2 pi. It's quite nice that we had that r dr d theta here because I need to actually do a little bit of a u substitution. Otherwise, this is going to work out. And that correspondingly would mean that my du was going to be equal to 8r dr. I have an r dr appearing, and so this is 1 eighth of the du. Okay, so doing that integral, I'll put the 1 eighth out the front. I'm not touching the 0 to 2 pi at all. I have a square root of u, and so that's going to go to u to the 3 halves times 2 thirds. So 2 thirds times the u, which is 4r squared plus 1 to the 3 halves, evaluated between 0 and 1, and then all integrated out with respect to theta. This is just a computational problem at this point, and then I'll summarize at the end here. So this looks like 1 12th, 0 to 2 pi. If I plug this 1 in, I'm going to get 5 to the 3 halves, and so I have a 5 to the 3 halves. Minus if I plug in 0, I'm just going to get a 1, and then d theta. Fortunately, there actually is no theta values in there, so the, the next integral is just easy enough. It's just a 2 pi, and so I get pi divided by 6. <laughs> what a mess. 5 to the 3 halves minus 1. And that's my final answer. So we use the surface area formula for implicit surfaces. And then when we computed everything out, what we got was a Cartesian integral where the region was just much more natural to be described in polar. So we converted from Cartesian to polar and normal multivariable methods, and then have computed out that final double integral in polar coordinates to get this messy result.